live. Okay, so now we're live. Nice. Hello, so, yeah. everybody. <laughs> Tapos, I'll, know, I'll send you the link right okay. now. So Hi. this is a corporate event, right? Oh, right now, yes. I am backstage at a event. <laughs> Which I can't say nice. what it is because it's supposed to be a surprise. It's supposed to be a Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sana that the uh, no I'm sure that the person's not watching or the whoever is the owner of the I got company. your link and I'm about to share it. I hope that's okay. okay. So All right. I'm, I'm just copying the link and I'm gonna post it right now. All right. Hold great, on. Great, great. Okay. Uh, Live interview right now. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I hope people tune in. Let's see. Oi. Sorry. There we go. Okay. Posting it on one page. I got to post it on my other page, too. So give me one second. Yeah, game. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, you can hear me loud and clear. Signal's okay. Yeah, you're. Yeah, yeah. The, the audio is very good. Okay, that's good. We're good. All right, I'm almost posted. It's it says finishing up. So. All right. Good. Okay. Now it has posted on one page, and I'm going to post it on my other page. Un momento, nice. por favor. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Nice, nice. All right. Almost there. Done. Okay. We have posted. All right. Good. I'm all right. Yours. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you uh, for having me. You're looking good, uh, I must say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Nicole and I have known each other for a long time. Uh, the last time we saw each other was, I think, 12 years ago. So for and you me have, to tell you... What? You still look the same. <laughs> you still look the same. Thank you. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you still remember my face. <laughs> it's been a while. Of <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's nice to see you again, Nicole. Um, uh, of course, we're here for uh, for the article I'm writing uh, for Republic Asia uh, Media, and uh, Nicole was once uh, part of an article I wrote, I think, a couple of months ago, and that was good. Nicole, thank you so much for the advice. Uh, we, she gave advice for her 20, 20 year old self, which I thought would be very useful for you know the young viewers or the readers of uh, Republic Asia. So thank you for that, oh, Nicole. I such a great topic. Thanks for tapping me because I, I, I actually had to sit down with myself and, and do a little soul searching. Like, I, 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 oh, really? That, yeah, I, I got emotionally affected by that interview in a good way. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 no, but it's, it's, it's something that I thought would be very helpful because, you know, like they say, um, you know, um, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. And uh, the only yes. the, you can't really go back, but if you could, there are things that you would mm -hmm. want to tell yourself that you should have done to make things a little bit better at present. Oh yeah. Time. So there are things I wanted to tell myself yesterday that I could have done better. The day <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. So I thought uh, you know, um, and I'm sure uh, if we can't if we can't benefit us at least the the younger people who are watching. Uh, or who were reading that article would uh, benefit from your advice. So that's the, the purpose uh, for that uh, article we wrote for uh, Republic Asia. So, Grateful so now uh, I, I have more time to talk to you to discuss about uh, certain things about your life now. Um, of course, uh, Nicole uh, <laughs> recently appeared in a, in a very controversial movie called uh, Katips. Uh, it's controversial. Controversial because of the fact that, you know, there was a lot of uh, buzz and conversation and debates and arguments that happened on social media about that movie and another one that's being uh, it's being compared with, which is Made in Malacanang. Mm -hmm. So 
<laughs> so now, since yes. you are one of the the stars of the movie Katips, uh, I thought maybe this would be the the op uh, an opportune time for you to ask you as a as part of that production, if uh, you if somehow all this you know hula baloo between uh, these two <laughs> really good movies, <laughs> uh, you know, reached you or were you did you ever end up joining that discussion about those two movies? Well, um, I have to say, I have friends who are part of Direct Daryl's Made in Malacanang. Um, Miss Beverly's there. Giselle is there. Oh, wait. I think my feed froze. Can you hear me? See me? Guys? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Okay, I'm not sure if you guys can hear me or see me. So I'm okay, just going Nicole. To yeah, sorry, Nicole. I think we uh, the signal. Uh, Did you went lose kaput. me? <laughs> yeah, I think. Okay, I lost um, sorry. I, All right, go ahead. Okay, no, you were yeah. saying. <laughs> okay, so we're back. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'd like to to start by saying thank you for supporting both films because what's important here is that we we support the industry, the Philippine cinema industry. It, it the more people who watch either film, the better. And I want to point out that I have friends in in the cast of Made in Malacanang. Uh, Tita Beverly Salviejo is a very good friend. I've, I bonded with her in Bacolod um, for a show. We, we've done some shows. We did a reopening of the Met together. And, you know, we're really... I respect her. I love her a lot. Uh, Miss Giselle, we've done some events together. She's she's awesome, dude. So, um, it, it's not what... It's not as volatile as what people might think it is. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not like a war. A lot of it yeah. has to do with social media and social media is the responsibility of everyone who is using social media. So if you turn it into a war, that's your responsibility. But if you use Good. it yeah. to, um, you know, promote positivity, to support one another at the end of the day, no matter color, no matter what color you're wearing, you're still a Filipino. Uh, if you use it to, to uh, support fellow Filipinos, then you know what what bad can come of that now um on our on our side i can't speak for the other film because i wasn't part of it but but on on our film side when katips was created by direct uh vince tanyada it, it was based on a stage play in 2016. so a lot of people were already familiar with the story of katips uh the stage play had its own following I was not part of the stage play. Uh, I replaced the actress who played the role of Lara, who migrated to the States. So, you know, I, I auditioned for the role just like everybody else. And I was actually shocked that Derek Vince casted me because unang una, um, our families, this is no secret, and Derek Vince will, will back me up on this. I think, hi Derek, I miss you, I love you. Um, our families politically were, were not always on the same side. Um, but right. this is my point. Working together is a choice you make that's far beyond politics. It's about friendship. It's about the betterment of our industries. It's about forgiveness. It's about moving forward. Our working together, despite the history of our families and our forefathers, is a testament to what, what we can do in the future. And maybe down the line, one day, our children might be able to watch the material that we've created and realize that, uy, there was forgiveness along the way. Mm. Possible pala yun. Because at the end of the day, as artists, as creators, as storytellers, ano mas pipiliin mo? Ano mas mahal mo? Politics or, or sining? <laughs> Kami kasi nga artists, I don't know, but a lot of us yeah. would choose sining because that's our purpose and and in this case it was about scening and and a lot of people will paint me or anyone different colors because of the background we, we may come from and and the the roles we may take but at the end of the day as actors we are we are playing roles <laughs> so yeah. you know social media will take it wherever it may but at the end of the day i'm still friends with people from the uh, from the cast of the other movie and i'm still friends from people from this movie and in fact their uh direct vince is releasing a, a new film um this month february and i'm also a part of it it stars jk labajo so 
you know, um, I think it's important to keep the friendships in the industry intact because let's be honest, our our industry could use the support. So if we're forever boycotting and canceling and and you know practicing cancel culture, then then how much slower will our progress be? We we should be so yeah. much further than we are. Um, if we didn't, you know, keep canceling people. Yeah, that, so, that, that's yeah. a good. Um, that's a good take, uh, Nicole, uh, because I think the discussions can can happen even if without really canceling anybody, right? You, you can yeah. argue with other people that don't agree with you as far as politics is concerned, but you know you don't go out of your way to actually destroy someone else's project just because you don't agree with them, right? right? And at the end of the day, it's just going to ruin, like, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, someone else's uh, career or, or project, and which, which is not going to be good for, for the overall health of the industry. If, if, right. If yeah. you know what I, mean. I absolutely right. agree. I mean, we can't take away the fact that people will always be passionate and opinionated, especially when it comes to uh, politics. That's, that's our country's been that way many, many years. But... Um, there's always a respectful way of communicating, I believe. Sure. Even if you really can't stand the person or what they stand for, there's there's always a way to communicate properly. And and even if people attack, even if they, you know, give you their worst, I don't believe in making patol and 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 you know being disrespectful because I'm not gonna get what I want anyways by doing that. Right. So why not just you know. Let it be. Let let, let it yeah, be and yeah, yeah, keep yeah. going. Yeah, I, I don't think it's it's worth uh, ruining your relationships with your your with your family, with your friends over politics. And and I, I remember uh, one person mentioned that you know said something very you know true about the political climate here in the Philippines. You're gonna. Yes. You know, you're gonna, you know, you're you're gonna ruin a relationship based on uh, your support for someone who doesn't even think about you <laughs> to, to begin with. Right. You know, at the end of the day, and then uh, you know, for what? You know, you've lost this relationship. You've you've uh, you've nurtured and you've you've cared about this person for a long time, and it it's gone just because of uh, you know an election cycle which is not worth it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it goes to show that the relationship wasn't that important in the first place. Yeah, that's true. And and uh, I mean I I I was I was exposed to it as a young child because I was born and raised in a political family and mm. and I if there's anything I learned from my grandfather who I love and miss and respect very much it's it's the fact that he was he practiced utmost decorum and respect and, and statesmanship to all Great. parties, even the yeah. ones who didn't like him, even the ones who, who were disrespectful to him, he, you know, he would still have dinner with them and and and, and be cordial and be kind. And and as, as far as I can, as much as I can, I would like to carry on that trait that he, he tried to teach us as kids when we were running around. Yeah, and for people who don't uh, remember uh, or who, do, who don't even know, uh, Nicole comes from uh, a long line of politicians. <laughs> uh, are you talking about the Laurel side here, uh, Nicole? Right? I'm assuming yes, that yes. this is you're talking. You're speaking of your the former vice president. Yes, I grew up with him after martial law. You grew up. Yes. You grew up with them. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so, Nicole, I I just thought that you would be the perfect person to ask about these things, since uh, you know I I. I I've known you since your General Luna days. You're, you're, you're <laughs> my 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 impression of you. You're a very opinionated uh, woman. So uh, oh let me goodness. start with your. You, <laughs> let me start with your. Um, you know what's been how it's been like. Uh, you know after your uh, General Luna days, your your career. It, you know during that time, rock bands were were huge, um, and then you've. Uh, You've you've moved on and uh, pursued a solo career. How's it been so far? It's been like what twelve years since then. Wow, I can't believe it's been it's over a decade. It's <laughs> kind of crazy. Right. You're right. right. Yeah, we we launched our our first album in 2010 with Jenner Luna, so it it has been over twelve years. And yes, yeah, so a lot has changed, but I'm grateful to still be working in music. 
um, in events because you know so so much has tested our um, industry, especially the pandemic. I know a lot of people can relate, and I don't know. I'm still here. I mean, uh, there there are many things I still want to do. I still consider myself a beginner, even if I've been doing this for more than 15 years. I I. I still consider myself a baby every day and and I'm so happy to learn from different musicians and what changed I think after I left uh, the band um, was I, I got exposed to different genre to play uh, singing different genres I, I started singing big band stuff standards mm. um, collaborating yeah. with, with other artists because of the corporate event industry because um, oh, okay. you know I I I had to make ends meet. So prior to General Luna, I, I had different day jobs. I was working as a teacher. I was an English teacher. I had yeah. I sold medical equipment. Uh, if you can imagine that. Yeah. I did it. Um, I, I I worked in a restaurant, which I had fun doing, and I also. Um, Re, how do you do it? Reworked ukai ukai clothes, designer stuff, and and sold it in a thirty square meter condo where I was living. It was also my shop, so I was doing those things prior to General Luna. And when the band w- was more stable, I let go of those things. But then when the band, um, you know, had its last gig, I kind of have had to make a choice and I really really wanted to continue being in music but how do you you know maintain your income your lifestyle so I, I got more active in events and thank god I got connected to brilliant artists brilliant musicians who I still work with today and it, it diversified my taste and my influences because now I like to listen to other things I like to you know I'm, I'm a little bit more open in terms of um, you know musical taste so that's one thing that changed um another thing that changed well life went on you know i'm I'm very i'm still quite close to my my bandmates i was just texting karen five minutes before this interview karen's my guitar (laughs) player we're we're in the same uh uh sunday bible study zoom thing bea i'm the ninang of her kid so we see each other a lot and and alex is in the state she's an air force pilot now uh, Audrey's wow. uh, still in the music industry doing doing other things. She's also a sound engineer. So I think everybody had to carve their own path. And there are many times I look back and I wish we, we kept going because there was so much potential. And, you know, when we signed as, as a band, we were like babies also in the industry. So there, there was a lot more we could have learned and could have improved on and could have kept building. But... I feel like we're exactly where we're meant to be, you know. I, I wouldn't change a thing. I, I miss it, but I wouldn't change a thing. I yeah. remember those days yeah. back in 2010. It was, I think people were still selling CDs, right? Uh, yeah, your albums yeah. were sold. It has a physical form that you can actually sell. But uh, of course, it, things have transitioned uh, rather yeah. rapidly for for the music industry now. Everything is di- digital and. Uh, you seldom see somebody buy a CD of a band that they like uh, nowadays, right. except if you're a Taylor Swift, where you can, <laughs> you can, you know, you can still record it on vinyl and sell it, and people would buy it. But for the the new artists now, it's kind of difficult to do it that way, which she, which General yeah. Luna was part of back in the day. So I, I was wondering uh, the changes. I'm sure you witnessed and you were part of from 2010 after you left General Luna and now. Um, what have you noticed about the industry and you know what have been the pitfalls for for the music industry here in the Philippines given the this rapid change in terms of selling your music well there, there are pros and cons highs and lows with as with any industry and it's funny because I was I was in a recent um, press con and uh, it had nothing to do with music by the way it was promoting a different project but somebody asked me they, they said, Di ba nagka-album ka? Bakit nag-flop? Bakit hindi ka nag- nagbenta? It's straight up, eh, no? But, you know, people want to know, okay? okay. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. Um, there are a million reasons why something could work or not. It, it could be taste, it could be timing. But but 
the timing that our album came out and the timing it it extended up to the point where my my solo album came out um, was a tricky time because that was a transitional phase with, from from physical to digital and I I can't speak of it from a label's point of view because I'm not a label but as an artist um, you know the domestic market is also different from the international market now it's bridging yeah. a little more now we're, mm. we're we have more global connections we have you know it's easier to collaborate because it's digital now but nung time na yun, um the crossover was difficult it, it was challenging people yeah. weren't streaming yet you know they weren't streaming music yet there were only a few people who were and and to convince people to do it was a little tough so there there was that or and obviously there are other factors now do these listeners like your music are, is, are yeah. you what they want right mm. so it's a learning experience and um i'm still learning I, I don't think one can ever stop learning and yeah i mean there's so many factors that could go right or wrong but today ang nakikita kong maganda naman sa music industry is yun nga, we're globalizing there are so many filipino artists who are making it big abroad and i'm not just mm. talking about the singer songwriters i'm talking about the producers i'm talking about the instrumentalists um, the people behind the the music industry there are filipinos everywhere in the world now so our network is so much bigger and and so much easier Whereas maybe 15 years ago, correct me if I'm wrong, but like there was only like a like one major pool where you wanted to be a big fish in, you know. Now now there's yeah. so many pools. You don't need yeah. a big name. You can connect with mm. anyone on social media. I've met some yeah. fantastic international personalities through Instagram DMs. You know that that didn't exist like back yeah, then. No. So right? Anything can happen. Yeah. You can easily just uh, communicate with anybody you, you used to like, or you're, you know, you, yeah. you're a big fan of uh, on social right. media. And chances are, oh, well, the, the chances is a little bit remote, but you know, if the, the there's an opportunity there for there to respond to you <laughs> compared to before, yeah, when there is no happen. way you can communicate with anybody. Happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, uh, I was also curious about uh, you. Know, you know, apart from uh, the band and, and oh, as you can tell, like uh, you're the only member uh, from General Luna who's continued to pursue uh, her music career. Um, but uh, you still, you know, uh, have you ever thought about, was there a point uh, uh, during those 12 years that you felt that you wanted to give up or do something else? I know you had to like make ends meet, but there, where, where, was there a point where, you know, you know, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I'll do, I want to do something else. Did you ever <laughs> feel that way about the music industry? Well, well thank you. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually not the only one who, who continued pursuing music. Uh, I, Karen's, Karen's still active with her band. Oh, yeah, yeah, of Audrey's course, of course. active yeah. in music, playing for, for Ellie and... and engineering uh Bea has a studio south bay studio recording studio it's alex who changed careers but i i hope she picks up the bass and jams again but anyhow um to answer your question yes maraming beses kasi yun yung challenge when you do what you love for a living a good day is astronomically good and a bad day is the pits but when you wake up the next day after a really really bad day when you know it's just not working but you want to do it all over again then maybe you're supposed to be doing it you know but it doesn't like oh my gosh the pandemic was enough to make a lot of people give up uh, right. not just on their job huh, but on life um, <laughs> I know right we all went through something there was a many times I can't even count uh, when my dad died that was really tough um because until now, I don't know the real cause of death. So I was, mm. I was disheartened. I, 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 I'm, I'm only happy when I'm writing songs, even if I don't release them. Like I just like to write songs, keep them there, keep them there, keep them there. I didn't write for five years. Really? Hindi ko kinaya. So what year was this, Nicole? Um, if you don't mind me, you know. my dad passed in 2016 October. 2016. So I, I only released. Uh, around 2021 my next song and it was 
I was trying, but it wasn't happening. So there are times where I I thought this is really for me. No pandemic, syempre na isip ko din 'yon kasi hindi din sustainable, 'di ba? Walang walang work. Actually, that's that's why I kind of switched over to acting because those were the offers on the table. And and um I'm I'm not hasa as an actress. I didn't do the workshop thing. I didn't it's a complete fluke that I got nominated for the awards that I did because I think so. I, I, <laughs> super fluke, man. I didn't train for, for anything. But but it cuz you have to grab what's in front of you now. Wala na wala na choice. Eh. So I'm glad I did because uy pwede pala, di ba? You know, whether whatever industry that that is, even if it's not in entertainment, even if you're putting up a, you know, an entrepreneurial thing, a business, if the opportunity is there, you take it to survive, di ba? But with music, it's a love hate thing, but at the end of the day, I love it so much. I love it talaga, eh. Di ba? But what what I know, what uh, I'm curious because he just mentioned right, like uh, when your father passed away in 2016, and I'm I'm sure that was very devastating for you. You didn't write for five years, and then the pandemic happened, and all of us felt it because we uh, we had you know so many people that we knew or we were close to who who also were you know uh, who passed away because of. Uh, you know how serious the, that uh, event or this particular pandemic happened in our country. So, uh, did you ever feel when you talk you were talking about mental health and and feeling down and and depression is you know we haven't really like you know gotten over that yet at this point. Uh, we we're, we're still like sort of easing it into the the new normal, so to speak. I mean, did you ever feel were there moments there that you felt? That reminded you of your father because other people actually experienced the same thing. Oh yes, I mean, I, a lot of people lost loved ones, and and you know it was it was just like it was like this silent invisible war where the only people to, the only way to save the people you love is to stay away from them. How ironic, right? Yeah. And and. And in the beginning of the pandemic, I know I know some people who lost loved ones and couldn't even be near them. So it made me grateful na kahit papano, you know, when, when my dad passed pre-pandemic, I could at least make contact. I could at least... Yeah. yeah. It was harder for those who couldn't. They couldn't even say goodbye. So, you know, it's it's really sad. But at the end of the day, I think that's also where a lot, I don't know, I can't speak for other people, but I can speak for myself. That's where a lot of people built their faith also. Because mm. faith was not so much a part of my life in my rock band days. <laughs> yeah. It, it you know, when you when you mentioned it earlier, I, I thought, oh, Nicole, oh, you, you went through that phase. Or I, I'm sure it's not a phase right now. It's like a totally change of, uh, of perception of life. And uh, I was uh, pleasantly surprised by... By by these changes, you know <laughs> that you that, well, the I'm hints no that you gave. Well, I'm no saint. I don't want to pretend I am. I'm not a saint. I, I can be very naughty, but but what's important? <laughs> and nobody's perfect, naman, di ba? Yeah. But yeah. but what's important is that we we we're not self reliant. We believe in something greater than ourselves. Because at the end of the day. Like if I was continuing my self reliance and 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 me 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 me. I'm gonna fail. Who will I rely on if I fail, di ba? Dapat si God. And it was, I, I thank my friends, um, if they ever get to see this video, Garlic, Bob, I thank them both for, for dragging me to, to these Bible studies, to these groups, because I didn't know I needed it so much. And I still do. And, and I'm, I'm not perfect. I fall in and out of that and I stumble and I make terrible mistakes. And a lot of people do too. But at the end of the day, it's... It's a test. Do you get back up or, you know, do you stay down there? And and yeah. the pandemic kicked us all in the in the sorry for my language, kicked us all in the nuts. But but um <laughs> yeah. 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 But that's um right. do you get do you get back up, right? That's that's yeah. the whole thing. And and there's someone who's someone great up there who's who's willing to pull us up. So we just gotta reach out our hand. 
That's it. Well said, Nicole. Um, so I've always known you, uh, General Luda sort of like represented like uh, if, if if I were to pick a local female uh, band to best represent uh, how women should kick ass, right? Uh, I would talk about, I'd probably <laughs> say General Luna uh, had that uh, kind of image when uh, you guys came Thank out. Thank you. So, Right, and, and now um, obviously it has gone hyperdrive as far as women empowerment is concerned. Um, what's your take on this? Because changes have happened so fast. Like I remember, we had this. In, I had this interview with um, um, one of the precursors for the Me Too movement, um, ah. and uh, I did an interview with her. She's from New York. Uh, she's a Filipina. Uh, Italian, a woman who was part, wow. who, who was, yeah, she was, um, she's a model in the in, in New York, and uh, she was part of the Harvey he Weinstein uh, case, and she was one of those wow. women who, who who was victimized, and uh, oh my gosh, so so ever since that, you know, things have gone, it, it's different. There was a huge shift as far as the relationship between men and women are concerned in the workplace. Um, how do you feel about that? Like, do you have uh, any opinion on the matter on how things have uh, turned up, turned out? I, I'm no expert in the subject, so I'll just speak as as a woman. <laughs> um, my love and respect go out to the lady you had interviewed and and everyone who's who's fighting for equality and and a safe space. Um, you know, this is this battles like centuries old and and now that women finally are able to talk about things that maybe even when i was a child were taboo to talk about um subjects like abuse weren't really listened to as much as they are now and i'm not that old i mean imagine the generations before me yeah it's so important to be able to talk about these things um it's good to know that there are people who can offer support now openly. You can go to websites, you can call hotlines and, and help is accessible. And if you are in a position to help, help, um, However, I, I this is just me. I, I don't believe naman in saying that women are above men. You know, so that that what I'm saying right now could could get me a lot of flack, but that's just a, a personal thing. Like to be equal, I will support. But to to say that that men are despicable, you know, beneath us creatures, I I don't the man also believe in that. Of course, there are some cases where <laughs> it's a sensitive topic because you have abusers. Yeah. You know, if if yeah. it's a, a male abuser, then okay, I get that. But but um. I, I think I'm where I am in the I don't know in the, the spectrum, <laughs> is is I I'm proud of the women who stood up for equality, but I would not right. ever place a man or let's say my future spouse or whatever beneath me. So right. um, that that's that's just my personal belief. Love me, hate me, I'm sorry, but <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I think. But that, but things are progressing, and I hope that. Um, the conversations that we have today always, always have the motive of possibility, uh, positivity right. uh, and, and not to, to undermine anyone of any gender, any age, any color, any nationality. Nicole, has it, ha, have <laughs> women gone past the, that stage where they panic when they turn 30 and they're not married yet? Um, is that something that uh, women now are not very keen as far as you know getting married is concerned or uh, because i remember back in the day or at least for for you know i'm probably like 10 years older than you <laughs> um uh, women uh, i used to date there were there were times that you would you would really feel that, that they wanted something more when they turned 30. so is, is that still the case now for the younger generation you think well, it's a it's a case to case basis. I think it depends on the woman. Uh, I can't speak for what other women want. Of course, there there will always be 
a woman who wants that the domestic life um personally i would love that but with the right okay. person right you know what i mean um i would like a chance at it am i meant for it i don't know is that what god wants for me maybe but i i would like a chance at it i i would be hurt if the man i was with shut that door for me only god can sh- can shut that door for me i can't even shut that door for myself because no matter how much i i put it in my head no, no it's all about the career i don't want to get married i don't want to be a mom konyare <laughs> i'm not saying that's where I'm coming from but konyare that's where my mind frame was eh paano ko sinabi ni god ay hindi ito yung eting destiny mo eh yeah eting purpose mo you were meant for this i can't stop that There's nothing I can do to stop it if it's meant for me. So I I I would I would have to learn to embrace it even if it's not what I planned for myself. But I I would be hurt if the man I was with is the one saying hindi pwede. So mm. yun. It's it's not, a matter of, get, of Yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, not, not to get you of, Yeah. Accepting what your will is and it's not always easy to do so. Well, not to get too personal, Nicole, have you ever had that conversation with your man about uh, settling down? Uh, <laughs> It's a conversation I should have had a long time before. It a long time. <laughs> yeah. Are you, and and I realize okay. now, in in retrospect, that you know they're they're not the easiest conversations okay. to have because they can turn off to some people. <laughs> pero pero important pala siya. These these things need to be ironed out. In the beginning, you know. Right. Otherwise, it's harder to discuss when the years have gone by. You're still seeing the same person that I'm thinking of, right? No. Oh, what? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, how I, long ago? I, I won't. I, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, audience. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't. Because, no, 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 no worries. I, I am an honest person. I won't delve into it because I, I, I want to be respectful. And and uh, also, but I do want to be honest. And also, I've never been the type to to post anything about my private life. I, if you look back on all my social media posts, it's all work, and that's really what I use social media for. Sorry, I'm boring that way. But <laughs> yeah. that's fine. That's but, cool. Yeah. At least you're you, Just you can set, set the that aside. The answer is no. Oh, okay. It's, has it been a while? I mean, because I, we haven't been, you know, getting in touch for. Oh uh, no, no, not that long a while. Uh, uh, months. It's been months. Oh, okay. It's pretty recent. All right. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope it's not too raw. But you know, to, I to, even to this it, naman, I wish everyone well. All is, all is peaceful. I wish every everyone well, and 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 you know, every everyone deserves love. So yeah. <laughs> so after after that ex- episode, Nicole, uh, do you still see relationships in the same way, or have you been? Do you go through a stage where you feel a little jaded after uh, you know a relationship that 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 lasted that long, uh, you know, uh, to end that way, or you know, is it something that it affected you uh, in a way? Uh I don't think I. I of course I. We were all affected. Like he's affected. I'm affected. But but me personally, I don't think I could ever be jaded because I love love. And okay. and I I love everything about it, even the bad parts. I love love, and and I will always love love because for me that's 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 what life's about. Yeah. You we were created to love people. Not not all romantically, ah, but I mean to show yeah. love to people, platonically, romantically, as parents, as as daughters or sons, we are vessels of love, and I don't want to be jaded, even if, yeah. you know, people are hurt. There's always something to to pick up from, and and I just hope that people will see it in a healing light. When the yeah. time comes, that's good, Nicole. Uh, I appreciate your your attitude uh, about it. And, and you're it. right on cue, Sir Ron, because right when you opened that topic, uh, somebody handed me a glass of whiskey <laughs> that I didn't ask for. So, wow! 
Oh, wow, that's single <laughs> malt. timing eh. Yeah. Right on Oh, ito tamang, tamang tama kasi si mas, tamang tama kasi medyo mas mabigat yung, ano, yung susunod na question kasi, you know, right oh, after okay. about so? marriage proposals or getting married and then, <laughs> of course, uh, there have been um, efforts in Congress uh, to push for the divorce bill and uh, you know, there's a reason, good reason for, for, for them to do that because obviously here in the Philippines, I think we're the only country that's, that's held back as far as uh, setting that in motion, having like a, a divorce law or, or allowing divorce in, in, in our country because of the fact that we're the only Catholic country, I think, in, here in Asia. Um, as expected, there'd be a pushback. But the, the truth of the matter is, uh, Nicole, uh, in, in the reality here in the Philippines, there are a lot of marriages that are, that are not working, but, you know, and couples are forced to stick around and be in the same house, even if there's physical abuse or, or all these other things that uh, you know that that make the relationship toxic. But do you think it's about time that we change this and you know and tell the Catholic Church that not to interfere with? Uh, I know this is a difficult uh, you know position or conversation. Yeah, this but is how tough. do you, <laughs> how do you feel about divorce? Okay, I, I cannot really give a sound opinion because I've never been married. So I, I don't know what it's like firsthand. However, I am a product of an annulled marriage. My parents were annulled. And and this is just a personal experience. Um, their annulment took almost nine years in court because of paperwork, because of whatever conjugal laws uh, were active at the time. I don't know if the conjugal laws are the same. I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, mm -hmm. but but um, yeah, uh, given all of that, I can't say because, I, again, I, I've never been married, but if a lot of people are going through annulments, which in effect are pursued in this country for many reasons which would be the same as pursuing a divorce then it is something to discuss i'm not saying for or against because i don't know what it's like but i'm speaking from being a child growing up spending nine years of my childhood bouncing back and forth from mom to dad and hearing about the nightmares of paperwork <laughs> to get an annulment yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean so so um I don't want to throw religion into it, but but there is an element. So it is a matter to be discussed. What are the let's Venn diagram it with the people who want to discuss it, right? <laughs> what are what are the pros and cons? Annulment versus divorce. Talk about it, Diva. Right? But I'm not gonna say where I am because I've not experienced it, so it's not fair. Yeah, well, the, the, uh, your opinions were uh, actually pretty. Uh, right on the money as far as uh, most people are concerned because obviously it's a it's a very um tricky conversation to have with anybody and 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 if you're you're really like full uh if you're a devout catholic it's 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 going to be very hard for you to accept something like that um but you know i just wanted to find out from you uh see how you you would go over you know very sensitive uh, topics such as divorce. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, on a lighter note, what's your, uh, do you have a, any particular mo dream movie project that, you, you know, if ever, since you're you obviously are more active with the, with your, with your movie career, do you have any particular, have you gone forward and, and thought maybe, you know, I can do this or maybe go Hollywood. Like, like, Who's this uh, local actress who's um, who's gone to who went to LA? Dolly De Leon. Oh my gosh, I've, uh, I've never go. met her, but but my goodness, what she's doing! I don't know if I'll ever get to meet her. I hope I do, but yeah, yeah saludo ako sa kanya. Yes, uh, similar dreams. I mean, the whole actress thing is new because that was not my dream. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 now that I've 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 tried it. A little bit i like it pala and and um i think a, a lot of actors here they they want to 
you know, be part of a project that's international. And, and I share the same dream. I would love that. I would love it even more if if my role or whatever it is I'm playing can can bring some of my Filipina heritage as part of it. Wow, that'd be great, you know. If if that could be integrated into the whole um, artistic message, even better. But but yeah, yeah, I would love that. Um, I I I want to play like some like psycho crazy role. That would be so much fun. Psycho crazy. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, like I'd want to do like a Gone Girl sort of thing, you know. Gone I mean, Girl. It's, it's fun oh, to play. Wow. Pede, pede. It's fun to play like the the like the the how do you say it the 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 ingenue romantic bleed stuff. That's the, that's fun. But I but I I also want to do the crazy stuff. I I, yeah. I feel like I might have uh, a fair amount of crazy. That that would work <laughs> to, to do something like that. Yeah, when yeah, you said uh, "Gone Girl," I'm like, <laughs> like, oh, okay, yeah, hmm, yeah. interesting. Roll, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, do you have any suggestions though? Like, there's K-pop, and it's it's known that they they actually even train some Filipinos, right? To, in how they they promote uh, their their artists and how their music industry right now has become global because of uh, how the government supports them. And, and there's, they have, it's really a, a big project that, you know, everybody's taken part of. Like, so I was wondering if you have any suggestions as to how you should go about it here in the Philippines. Like if you were to promote the, our Filipino artist, have you ever Ooh, thought about okay. that? Like what would be a good thing to do? Um, to make it happen. Well, it's interesting what you said. That oh, sorry, am I choppy? Can you hear me? No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Okay. Um, it's interesting what you said that that a lot of artists here are now training in, in uh, with similar formulas to what the K-pop artists do. I've not myself experienced that, so I'm just talking as an observer, right? Um, but but because a lot of Filipinos support um, K-pop. We're learning from them also, you know, the culture. It's it's more than it's more than a, it's a lifestyle. And and a lot of Filipinos embrace that lifestyle. And I think we're learning. Like there are a lot of bands, younger bands here who are like housed together, they train together, they, they do all the dance training, singing training, everything. They they, they do everything. They're housemates. And I've myself not experienced that, but I but I, I think people are learning na puede pala. Um, siguro kung may masasabi ako as an artist to our government is, you know, whenever like a Filipino champions something abroad, like kanina we've mentioned Miss Dali De Leon, you know, garnering all the the recognition and well deserved recognition, might I add, abroad, we were so quick to claim that that's ours, that's a Filipino, we're yeah. we're, we're blood man. Or, or like whenever some uh, Filipino wins a singing contest or, or anything, yeah. we're like, oh, Pinoyon. So I that fervor, that that passion, sana it can be equivalent to how much money the government supports that industry also. Because yes. we're so quick yeah. to claim it. Eh. Pag Pinoy, yeah. oh, atin yan. Pero pag humihingi ng budget, ganun din baka bilis? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> pero sana... <laughs> Yeah. Kasi, we're proud naman eh. I mean, pinagmamayabang natin ang artists natin all around the world because they really are good. They deserve yeah. it. So I hope that the budgets can be allocated to justify that that passion behind our artists. That it's not all talk. You not know. all talk. <laughs> and they're just, uh, it's not just gonna, you know, it, it look like they're just waiting for somebody to succeed, succeed first because before they claim the, yes. the, you know, the glory or, or congratulate them, they have to like start from from the bottom and and really grow on the really prepare the grassroots for for success. Like because it's you know it, it's sad because, because I think it will benefit the Philippines uh, if we did invest in our artists because they're the ones yes. who are showing you know who's introducing the Philippines to the world and if I can imagine a Nicole. Laurel, uh, you know, accepting a an Oscar, <laughs> uh, one of these years, I wish, and uh, right? 
right? <laughs> I'm, ge- I'm getting be- none. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> there are a lot of people who deserve it more than me, though. Um, but I, but I you never know, Nicole. <laughs> you never know, Nicole. I mean, things happen. Uh, it could happen. But you to know you. that. I... That being said, um, I don't want to undermine then, because I think there are a lot of people I may not be aware of who are giving sound financial support, and I might just be ignorant, right? My my statement was just a blanket statement that sana all. <laughs> yeah. But but meron kasi lalo na sa private sector, marami namang sumusuporta sa sa artists natin. But I I just I guess my my statement was more of I hope it can be a regular thing. Like yeah. you don't have to think twice about it. It's it it's has to like be institutionalized. A priority. Yeah, exactly, yeah. institutionalized. So yeah, that's what I meant. If you were to, rec- it's almost Valentine's, uh, Nicole. But okay. Date ka na ba para sa Valentine's? May Valentine ka na ba? Sana may show ako. Yun, yun yung, yun yung pinaka okay na date. That would be ideal. <laughs> okay, good. But uh, if if you were to recommend something, I, I, I don't know if this is something applicable uh, or even even thought about it. But if you were to recommend a movie that the uh, that a couple should watch. For Valentine's Day, is the, you have any particular movie in mind? Like, ah, I don't think this is my go-to movie when I'm in a date. Well, maybe not Gone Girl. Gone Girl. Not that one. I mean, I don't know what you're into. If you're into that, that's cool. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not really updated. Um, as for the new ones, so I'm I'm gonna go with the, the oldies, go with a classic. But yeah, go oldies but goodies. What would you recommend? Um, just top of my head, like the light fair. Like there's this one with Jack Nicholson and mm. um, Diane Keaton. What's that? Something's gotta give. I think. Something's gotta give. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I just saw it. Recently, because on my Netflix interface, so I remembered it. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. It's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah, yeah. If you want something more dramatic, the Notebook is always uh, <laughs> a go-to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, if, yeah, if, you're, the, yeah. if you're into crying together, then yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, the no, the, the so Notebook many, is I'm like the kryptonite. The kryptonite for the macho man. It's like, oh no. <laughs> No matter how uh, you know uh, stoic or 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 uh, manly man you are, if you watch the Notebook, yeah. I'm sure there's a, a tear or two you will shed. For sure, eventually. for sure, it's such a classic. It's it's a modern it's a classic. classic. <laughs> yeah, and daming, um, and daming, I know I, I'm I'm not the best at this because can't remember. But but yeah, there's there's a lot of choices. Five songs on your Spotify Valentine playlist. Ooh, if I ever get married one day, yeah, my first dance song I want is Ray Charles's version of Still Crazy After All These Years. So that's one. That's definitely one. Um, if there was a song I wish a man would sing to me, it would be Sting's Practical Arrangement. Oh my goodness, those lyrics. Ha! Huh. Those lyrics. Um, uh, Sting, When We Dance, also. When we Fields dance. of Gold, also. Oh. You know what? You you could just play all the Sting songs. I, I'd be happy. <laughs> Even uh, the... Uh, his police... Uh, um, t- his time with the police when he... Even the the more common common songs like every breath. Yeah, I mean you take. they're not romantic, but but <laughs> I, I, I maybe 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 I'm just the type of girl that likes that kind of music. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So Sting is uh, is a recommendation for Valentine. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah I love it. I love I love Sting. Um, I think my favorite. Oh, anything is big band. Big anything band. big band. Yeah, that's that's you know. Um, all the things you are, the classics, um, 
uh, anything Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah, that that'll that'll strike up the mood. At least I know it does for me. Cool. Oh, thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, you have a, a couple of fans here. He's out of the rail also is here. Who's a Uy, huge fan of uh, your band? Right. Hello, oh, hi, Zaldi. Band reunion, daw. Thank you. Thank you. Sabi ni Kung bumisita si Alex, try ko kulitin. She's in the States, eh. Why not, diba? Oh, yeah. gusto ko rin, actually. I, I've been wanting that. So, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it should be fun. Um, so, we're down to a couple of questions here, Nicole. Um, first, let me ask you about inspiration. I mean, the... The... You know, it can be anybody. Do you have anybody in, in mind especially when you're you're in your down moments and you're not uh you know you're, you're in those moments where you're contemplating contemplating about life who inspires you the most to move to continue and to strive and uh, be better my mom absolutely number one she's been through so many challenges uh, many of which nobody knows about and and she has always remained positive. She has always forgiven people who were not good to her. She has always brought, you know, uh, she's matapang, don't get me wrong. She's a Batamgenya. So, <laughs> you know, she's, 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 not, she's not all sugar and spice and everything nice, but her heart is amazing. And, and her willingness to be truthful yet be respectful is something I, I look up to. And she does it with such grace and, and coolness that you want to be around her. You feel comforted by her. I love my mom. Uh, both my grandmas inspire me. They're, they're both amazing artists and they spent their lifetimes, and I'm talking like over 90 years, just dedicated to doing what they love against all odds um both my grandfathers also i'm, I'm mentioning mostly family because they really yeah. it's the truth they really inspire me that's that's really who does and i could mention like so many you know celebrities and and, and whatever but but i'll leave that to, to <laughs> I'll, I'll leave that for another subject but i'll stick to family because <laughs> that's the first thing i think Sige lang, Nicole. May, ta, ano, may part to pa to interview mo. Uh, <laughs> so, finally, um, if you were to um, impart one valuable lesson uh, for the life that you chose, what would it be? Uh, what have you learned so far? What's the big takeaway from how, how long has it been, Nicole? I mean, since you were born. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I'm still learning. Um, I think what I try to remind myself whenever things are not going well or, or I'm having a hard time is that life, this life, is just a stopover. It's not the final destination. At least that's what I believe. So you make the best of what you have while you're here. but you invest afterwards and and you do that by by sharing the good words by by being a brother being a sister by helping those around you by by using your god-given talents for good and and um when i remind myself na after a bad day na parang delilipas din yan kasi hindi naman ito yung final <laughs> destination ko may may after pa um then i don't feel so bad because it's just a blip you know the time on your gravestone right the time where you're born the, the year you're born and and the the year that you die there's a little dash in between and that that dash represents our entire life it is so short so um i try to remind myself that it's, it's just a it's a blip in the dash. I want to go somewhere after. I don't. I don't want my be all end all to be a dash. You know. So there. That's that's what that, I'm learning. That's so good. Yeah. That's the the way you you describe that. 
I've never looked at it that way. Like there's a dash. It's a good observation. Oh, someone told um, me that. I'm not taking credit for that. Someone shared that. With me. <laughs> yeah, but uh, nevertheless, that was a that's a good take on our lives and uh, yours as uh, you know, most especially. And, and thank you so much, Nicole. I really appreciate the time that you've given us uh, this uh, evening. And um, thank you as well. I had fun. You, you, uh, well, I'm glad that you, you had fun, and um, I hope to see you again soon. And um, yes, let's we do it again. <laughs> so good luck with your event tonight. I hope the the host will be Thank surprised. You. We're right about to start. Perfect timing. You're about to start. Perfect timing. <laughs> so good night, Cheers. people. See you soon, and have good a good night. one. Cheers. Thank you, Zeron. Yeah, I'll see, right. you, I'll see you online. Bye. Bye. Bye.